If I was going to take your photo, what would you do? Maybe you would strike a pose or maybe you'd make a face, but there's a good chance that you're going to stop moving. And that's because we all inherently understand that in order to get a good quality <coughs> photo, you need to be holding still. But it's for that reason that photos don't always tell us the whole story. Say you wanted to understand a dancer's choreography. There's a good chance that photos aren't going to show the dancer leaping through the air, or spinning their partner around. And that's because those moves are too high energy and that makes them really difficult to capture. So this is the same situation that we face when studying proteins. Now proteins are these biomolecular machines and they carry out work in our cell and they have partners and choreographies all of their own that frequently we can't capture using just a photo. So what do we do? Well, in our lab, we've decided to drop the camera and let the dance speak for itself because as proteins move, so do their atoms. Now, hydrogen is a principal component of proteins and it has a dance move all of its own. If given the opportunity, meaning if it becomes exposed on the surface of the protein, that hydrogen can swap places with a hydrogen from the surrounding water. Now, we can use this to our advantage using something called heavy water. Now, heavy water is the same as regular water. It's just made up of heavier isotopes. So where normal hydrogen would weigh one pound, heavy hydrogen weighs two. And that means that every time this swap occurs, we're adding weight to that section of the protein. And the regions that gain the most weight are the regions of the protein that then move the most. This is the technique that I'm using in my research to study a protein called the proteasome. Now the proteasome is this giant recycling center where old and worn out proteins go to get broken down. That might not sound like a very exciting job, but it is a critical one because if you turn off the recycling center, the cell will most likely die. And that's not just in our cells, but also in pathogenic ones like the bacterium that causes tuberculosis. And I'm very proud to be standing here today and say that I've done it. For the first time, I have mapped out the solo dance of the proteasome from tuberculosis. But this is only the first phase of the research. The next is to see how that dance changes with different partners. Maybe the waltz becomes the tango or a cha-cha. And by understanding the greater choreography and how all these parts come together, we can see which region of the protein is most important to the dance. And then we can target it and maybe we can insert a misstep. And by doing that, we could end up with some very potent and incredibly needed anti-tuberculosis therapeutics. Thank you.